Ever worry about what would happen to your retirement plans if there was a market crash right before or right after you retired? That's fair. But 99% of the time, it doesn't have to be the end of your plans. Not at all. My name is Reese, and today I'm coming to you from the Oregon coast simply because it's awesome. And today we're going to look at four key steps that you can take to keep a market crash from throwing off your retirement plans. In fact, I'll go so far as to say that if you do these four things, there's usually no need to change your overall plan at all. I can say that with confidence because if you go into retirement expecting market crashes rather than being shocked by them, and if you plan for them, then when they happen, which they surely will, you will already be ready for them. Step one build in a good sized buffer. What I mean here is that you need to leave some excess in your plan. If you've done the math and you think you're going to need 600 grand in order to retire in addition to all your pensions, etc., well then plan to have 650 grand or something like that. Our software makes it really easy to find the sweet spot, but the point is do not go into retirement with just enough. Give yourself breathing room so that if you need more, you have more. Step 2 maintain a healthy slush fund. Now I preach the virtues of having a healthy sized slush fund in retirement all of the time. And when I say healthy, I mean at least a year's worth of expenses in liquid, no risk holdings in a high interest savings account or something like that. Some market downturns take years to recover. And if your investments are down by 30 or 40%, then why would you want to sell any of it? Obviously, you wouldn't. So if you have a healthy slush fund, then you can dip into that instead. Now, that said, you may have some plans or accounts that have minimum amounts that you have to take out of them every year, like a RIF or a LIF. But even then, you just take the minimum amount that you need to when things are not looking good. And even then, a lot of it can come from interest or dividends most of the time, so it's likely that you may not even really need to sell hardly any of your original capital. But even if you do, you can just reinvest them while the market is still down, effectively having no real loss. Then once markets bounce back up, like they have every single time in history, then feel free to just restart your withdrawals like you were before, and even take out a little extra to top back up your slush fund. Which leads us to step three. Remain invested. Do not jump out of your portfolio while the market is in the toilet. Never, never, ever. As long as you have a diversified portfolio and not some concentrated speculative mess, history has shown that selling while markets are down has proven to be a colossal mistake every single time. This is just an overview of a number of markets and asset mixes that is put out by the Ontario Securities Commission. This is the opposite of a sales piece. It's just a look at history. And the story is clear. Downturns are temporary. Clouds come and clouds go. Do not make a mistake that you cannot come back from. I've seen this before and it's brutal. If you're going to do anything during these difficult periods, seize the opportunity of the sale prices and buy more. We do this at the supermarket. So why not at the stock market? Step four. Adjust your spending as needed, which is usually less than you'd think. To illustrate this, I'm going to show you a plan that is perfectly solved. This couple is tracking at 100% of what they say they want in retirement. But let's throw a crash at them, a doozy like the 0809 crash. Let's hit them with a 50% drop and let's make it take five years to recover. Nasty. But notice how it only dropped them to being 83% on track. Not cool, but not the end of the world either. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that a decent amount of their income is made up of Canada Pension Plan and old age security, which do not drop at all when the markets do. So really, in a downturn, for the bulk of us, it's just a portion of our income that's actually affected. Anyway, they don't like being 83% on track. So we decide to make an adjustment, and we take a look at what dropping their income by 5% does. Not 50%, just a minor 5% tweak. And there you have it, 90% on track. Much better. Now what about dropping their income by 10%? Look at that, they're back in the black. 100%. Now, obviously, no one wants to drop their income by any percent, but we do what we got to do. And for a lot of people, delaying their retirement is a far worse idea than reducing their spending by a little bit. And of course, there are other things that we can do too. 
like doing a little bit of extra work on the side. And I'm not talking about jumping back into the hamster wheel. I'm just talking about maybe earning an extra thousand dollars a month. That's 12 grand a year that you don't have to pull out of your own investments while it's an unfavorable time to do it. Now, obviously something like the Great Depression would require a whole lot more patience and some extra strategy to get through, but that is a very rare bird and people did get through it. They just had to adjust in real time. But again, this is why I always recommend that you build in a serious buffer and a serious slush fund.